Chris in ooh, North America. That's specific. I've heard about that place. Hey, Chris, how are you doing? Hi, I'm all thanks. How are you? I'm doing good. Excited you called in. What can we help you with? Um, I'm just going to give some quick background for it first, just so it makes full sense in context. But um, so just I do need to include this story just to give you some background. And I understand that it might be a sensitive topic for some people. It doesn't really bother me anymore, but um, it might bo bother other people. Um, so when I was about seven years old, three people tried to kill me in a church after school program. Um, this wasn't why I questioned my faith, though I am currently agnostic, but it did lead to me getting flashbacks of what happened when I'm in a church building. Um, my mom knows that I get these. Um, she doesn't know I'm agnostic, but I think she suspects it. But she still insists that I go to church with her on holidays and during concerts when she's singing. I've been doing that for years, but I've been recently been making excuses not to go. And I don't really think I can go back um, but if I don't go like for Vigilia for Christmas Eve, every, my whole family is going to know and it's going to mm. stand out. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm, I'm so sorry that that is something you have to deal with. That is, that's horrific. Um, I don't, I don't want to dig on anything that's going to be, you know, too hurtful, but. Oh, it, the, the event itself does not bother me anymore. <laughs> well. You're stronger than I yeah. can be. <laughs> so what do you mean when you say some people when you were seven tried to kill you in a church? Um, it was a church after school program and three boys tried to hold me down and smother me and somebody walked in before they could kill me. Oh my wow. God. Wow. Yay, church after school programs. Yeah, and I mean, it, it probably should have affected how I treated religion just because the priest was originally going to side with my mom and make the boys not able to go there anymore. But then he changed his mind and said, well, you just have to take her elsewhere oh if you God. don't want her to be around them. Of course. And of course. there were other issues too, like where it's like, if you're a good Christian, you're just going to forgive them and et cetera, et cetera. But oh, I yeah. mean. What, what happened to an eye for an eye? Maybe we should hold them down and attempt to smother them for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, oh man, one of those kids was just mm. absolutely crazy. I mean, he confessed to me the week, like a week before. Wow. I mean, yeah. Wow. Well, I, I understand the hesitation to go back and the concept of having flashbacks because I do have those, uh, not for anything as serious, but I get that for sure. Um, so I guess uh, your question is how do you navigate getting out of not going? going. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you said that they, they know about the flashbacks. They know that these happen. My mom does. And I recently told my stepdad about it, but none of the rest of my family knows. And it's kind of, my stepdad's side is Catholic. My mom's Presbyterian and we've been going, we've been celebrating, uh, Vigilia, which is his side is, um, Polish. We've been celebrating Vigilia going to church, coming back and finishing Vigilia. So everybody's going to know mm. if I don't, if I'm the only one who doesn't go. Right. I mean, I've, I've been in that same position too. Um, before I came out as an atheist, it, it was a lot of that conversation. Oh, we're going to church. You want to come? Like, uh, no, I think I'm busy or I'm going to go to another church. That's something I, I played around with for a while before I was uh, fully ready to come out to them was I would just pretend I was going to a different church. Um, so it's possible, um, if you're not ready to come out to everybody, um, to just say, oh, hey, I found another church. I'm going to go there instead, but you guys have fun. I don't know if that excuse would work since I've been going to this one for so long. And it's like, I don't know. I don't, I think she would not believe it. That's fair. And I think it's kind of a yes or no kind of an option right now. And I, do you, feel, I, do you feel safe saying no? Like, are you going to lose access to uh, resources that you need to survive if you say no? Um, I don't know how it's going to go. I don't, I don't think I'll lose access to resources. I do think it would throw a wrench in the relationship, especially if they started asking why. Yeah and her suspicions were confirmed. I, I mean, we almost had that conversation once and it uh, was a lot of like, 
that's when she started insisting that I start going again. Yeah. Um, and it just didn't, it didn't go well. Um, I mean, it was civil, but I mean, it was almost like I was a totally different person right to her if I wasn't Christian yeah yeah that is definitely the hump you have to get over I think for me my my decision would come down to what's going to cause you the most emotional relief which one is going to uh because it seems like you're kind of at an either or situation here you said like a yes or no so which one of those is going to be best for you emotionally and mentally um, would it be easier for you to go through this holiday season and be forced to confront certain flashbacks and certain emotions and be in a position where you feel like you have to go? Or is it going to be easier for you to kind of cut ties with that part of your life and let your family know where you stand? I can't, unfortunately, I can't make that decision for you. That's a very personal one. But I think put yourself first. Make sure that you're doing what you think is best for you. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any issue with Certainly, I don't recall anybody ever trying to kill me in church, and I, I don't have flashbacks. So setting that part aside, um, I had to make a decision about whether or not I was comfortable, more comfortable with people liking me for me and knowing who I was or if I would pretend. But even after I was an out atheist and, like, after Beth and I got married, um, of course, everybody in her family knew I was an atheist because I was already hosting the TV show then. But it didn't keep me from going to church for special events and and things. And that really made some things clear to people who had questions about me. Now, I realize I'm talking about something different from my own parents. Um, my own parents' view on it is, eh, God gives you a free will to make your choice, and you made your choice, and we're going to leave it in God's hands. In the case of, of my in-laws, it let them know that despite the fact that we disagree— I'm willing to participate in things um, to to maintain the, the cohesive family unit. And I'm not there to, you know, it's I don't catch on fire when I walk into church. I don't stand <laughs> up in the middle of the sermon and start pissing on things. You know, it's it let them know that, yeah, oh, this is just a guy. He just doesn't believe what I believe. And for me, there was a couple of different things. One of them is I, I wanted to not only be autonomous, but to be respected and, and treated as an adult. And... The notion that someone would withhold uh, love or respect or anything else merely because we didn't agree on something that, by the way, they can't argue successfully for, um, was was really troubling to me. And I finally just made up my mind, uh, and I did it again this March with the birthday card that I got that I read. Mm -hmm. When I read that, I read it with the knowledge that if this ends with my relationship with my parents, I have to be okay with that. And I was because it was far more important to let people know that this stuff, you know, that I have to deal with this stuff, uh, that I'm not some, you know, paragon of atheism without the hassles of religion. And that was more valuable to me. Uh, and calling people out for their crap was more valuable to me because I'd, I hadn't done anything to them or about them. I'm not trying to change their mind. I'm not... Um, you know, suggesting that they need to change. I mean, how, how, how silly would it be for me to say, you know what, mom, dad, um, we just, we can't have any more family dinners until you agree with me and denounce your religion. And maybe in the, in the course of having those discussions, phrasing, framing things that way might help them realize this isn't about you and me. This isn't me saying, Mom, you're wrong. This is not me saying, Mom, I don't like you. It's I am not convinced of what you're convinced of. Uh, and so convince me. Mm -hmm. you know. And if you can't, that's not my fault. And if anything, it's God's fault. And I, why, why, can I, why is it that you won't let me give me the same respect as, a, as an autonomous human being that I would give you? Yeah, I I know that wouldn't go over well with her, but I totally understand what you mean. It didn't, didn't go over particularly well with some <laughs> of my relatives either, but it went over well with me. And I am I am personally far happier uh, having done that and knowing that I, I took honest steps and was respectful um, and that I was a, I, I could argue both sides of this better than they could. And instead of using that to beat people up. I just use it to expose the fact that 
uh, one of us has definitely taken this seriously when it comes to looking into the evidence and the other one has taken it seriously in the sense of accepting what they've been told. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference between those and one of them is far more problematic than the other. Yeah, I think ultimately if you, if you just, either way you decide, um, feel free to call back and let us know uh, kind of what happened and what you dealt with. Uh, we'll be here to listen and to support you. And also, um, have you heard of Recovering from Religion? Um, I was actually watching through the backlog. Somebody only told me today in, in the Discord chat about mm -hmm. um, Talk Heathen because I was originally thinking of calling into the Atheist Experience because that's the only show I know about. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been starting to watch the backlog and I just saw an episode where they talked about that so I know where the number is. Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, that would be that would be my next step is to kind of call them and maybe get some support from them as well. And the other thing is to look for... Um, a secular community in your area. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I mean, there are secular communities in North America, but, um, <laughs> but, but, but finding... I, I actually told them, I actually told them Northern America. So. Oh. Oh, got it. Okay. Well, th there are some there. If, if you're in New England, though, there may be fewer of those uh, because in the entire time that I've been part of the secular movement, I have never spoken anywhere in New England. Interesting. It, 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 well, all right, New York, New Jersey, but I mean like Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, any place where it's close to Canada. I've been to Canada countless times, did a tour there last year. Mm -hmm. And yet, curiously, New England, they don't seem to give a shit about religion quite, <laughs> quite often. <laughs> Interesting. Well, thank you so much for calling, Chris, and we wish you the best, really. Okay, thank you both so much. Yeah, keep, keep at it. Thanks. Bye. That's hard. That's it's the common it's the common story though. It's it's kind of like the trial by fire that a lot of deconverts have to go through is is having to have these really hard conversations. It, it might be worth it, uh, and and we'll, we'll have people from recovering for religion back on. We've we've had Daryl and Gail, but also I talked about getting some of the volunteer be counselors amazing, to call yeah. in because I don't have any data on this, but I would suspect. People talk about what keeps people in religion. And quite often we talk about, you know, the various fears that religion exploits, the fear of what happens after death or the fear of being alone. But the fear of being alone gets amplified when we start talking about family relationships. Right. And I would argue that the fear of being ostracized from your relatives might be the, the strongest factor in determining whether or not somebody continues to participate in religious stuff, even when they don't believe anymore. It's, it's for fear of, you know, am I going to, you know, is Christmas going to be incredibly awkward? Right. Are family dinners going to be awkward? Am I going to get kicked out? Because we know of people, we've helped teenagers who have been kicked out of their homes by their parents mm -hmm. uh, just because they, they no longer share the religion that their parents do. Right. Yeah, it's rough. I, I've been very lucky myself, but yeah, I have, I have friends who this is this is the story that they tell, and it's it's really hard. Um, okay, I think we're going to take a theist caller. 